It's not surprising that judges are invited through litigation to decide cases around climate change in many parts of the world. As it happened with environmental law in the early 70s and in other parts of the world in the 80s, this type of litigation will not be uniform around the world. There will be countries in which those cases will be brought first. In fact, this has already happened. And jurisdictions in which this will take longer. In any event, I am inclined to believe that climate change litigation all over the world is unavoidable. And it is unavoidable because judges are invited by constitutions, by laws, to decide all types of cases dealing with human conflicts. Human conflicts among people and conflicts between people and nature and future generations. In Latin America, this has taken a sort of back door to the courtroom, not as I call them pure blood lawsuits or climate change lawsuits, but climate change being brought through more traditional environmental law cases. Climate change within the context of major deforestation uh, litigation, or climate change and protection of water sources, riverbanks, and so on. Climate change and wildlife. Climate change and the protection of the coast, mangroves, etc. So this inter indirect approach is one that we see in Latin America and especially in Brazil. But there are already a few cases in which climate change with name and surname are brought to courts in the region. There are some new principles that necessarily will evolve within the context of climate change itself. But there are environmental law principles, some of them adopted more recently by courts, that will, in my view, play an important role in climate change litigation. Let me mention one, namely the principle of the ecological function of property rights. We tend to believe that climate change litigation is mainly against governments, but it's not just against governments, it's against corporations, it is against private citizens. So it's important that we incorporate that vision that property rights, the bundle of rights, includes at its core an ecological function, a duty to protect the environment. Finally, let me say that we judges have to be optimistic because we believe in the rule of law and more recently we believe in the environmental rule of law. Courts have been very important in changing major aspects of human life in the past 100 years. And I suspect that it will be the same with climate change. Judges will not 
be able to solve the climate change crisis, but they are definitely, and it has to be like that, a major component of the mosaic of institutions that have to, to deal uh, with climate change.